Hey guys, it's Rob with 3D Printscape. Today I want to talk about the infill settings available in Cura. Earlier this week I did a video going over all the infill patterns available. I printed out a bunch of coasters with the infills exposed, uh, showing you all of the available options. Uh, I will link to the video in the description below. I wanted to do a follow-up video going over the settings available in Cura, so that's what we're going to do today. Before we jump over to the computer, make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe. It'll help support the channel going forward. Thank you. All right guys, I got Cura open here with just a random display stand on there so we can use as an example. Now let's jump into the infill settings. So the base one is at the top here. It's just typically set to 20%. Um, you can increase it by just clicking on it. It'll bring this drop down and you can go to whatever infill percentage you'd like. I'm going to be doing a video shortly on the differences between the infill percentages to show you what it actually looks like. But for most of the more display purpose prints that I'm doing, I'm typically printing between 20 and 30 percent. If it's something that I'm printing for my kids, um, I've got a five-year-old and a ten-year-old. I'm probably going to go 50 or 60 percent because, well, they're hard on things. <laughs> um, if I'm doing something that's going to be more for structural or um, a part that I need to depend on, I'm going to be going probably 60 to 80 percent, and in some cases, maybe even 100. Though that's pretty infrequent. All right, so let's just say we're going to go 30 percent here. All right, the next setting is our infill pattern. So typically I will do grid unless I have a specific reason not to. I'm going to add a link in the description below to the video I did on the infill patterns. In that video I printed out a pretty much a coaster utilizing every one of the infills so you can actually see what it looks like printed. Um, grid is going to be the most common. It's a standard infill pattern. You've got really four groupings. You've got your low support, which is going to be uh, line, zigzag, or no infill. You've got standard support, which will be your grid and triangles. You've got your high strength or high support, which will be your cubics, your octets, or the gyroid, which also looks really cool in time-lapse videos. And then you have your flexible patterns, which is going to be your crosses or your concentrics. Uh, again, I go over all of that in the video, so make sure you check it out. All right, so we'll just leave this at uh, grid for now. All right, let's jump over to the shell. Here, there are a couple settings I wanted to go over. You've got your wall thickness which I typically don't change in some cases you might want to I just haven't found a reason um, then you have your top and bottom thickness there might be more of a reason to change these and the video I was talking about where I did the coasters to expose the infills I actually set the top thickness to zero and then top layers to zero as well um, that way it didn't actually have a top so you can see the infills uh, if for some reason you didn't need a bottom or you wanted a thicker bottom, you can change that here. Let's say you want a really thick bottom for something you're printing, you can just bump that up to 8. And then uh, go ahead and print that. So there are going to be cases where you might want to change these, so I wanted to talk about them briefly. It's not directly related to infill patterns, but it kind of is the support around it, so I just wanted to make sure it was brought up. So let me go ahead and set that back to 4. And then once you have the settings you want, you can go ahead and go down to slice. It will give you an estimate pre, uh, an estimated print time, which in this case is uh, 20 hours. That's a, quite a large base here. And then 274 grams of filament is what it's estimating. Um, Let's see what it actually turns out to be. I'm probably going to change this. I won't print this base at 30%. I just wanted to give you guys an example, but let's say if I wanted to drop this to 20%, what does it do? It took, what, about four hours off of the print time and a significant amount of filament as well. All right, so once you have the settings you want, go ahead and save it to removable, 
and then you can go and inject it if you want. I'm not going to because I have a couple more changes to make for a print I'm doing later. So I want to get your feedback on this. What are the common infill settings that you use? What's the typical density that you tend to print? And what pattern do you tend to default to most often? And if you switch that up, uh, what are the reasons behind it? So go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll make sure to respond to as many as possible. And again, make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe. It'll help support this channel. All right, so that was the infill settings that are available in Cura. The main ones being the infill density and the pattern. We also talked about the top and bottom layer height and why those are important. Make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe. Until next time, have a good day.